Hey guys, it's me again, CSGO Biology. Today, we are going to talk about chapter 9.4, Assimilation. And guys, if you think this topic, Assimilation, is very hard to understand, I hope you guys can spend 5 minutes to take out your pen and paper to draw it after me. Alright, let's get started. Assimilation. Let's look at the definition of assimilation first. Assimilation is a process where the product of digestion are incorporated and utilized in the cell. It means that after our food is being digested, it will be absorbed, sent to our body cell and used by our body cell. And this process, when our body uses the nutrient to do something, is called the process of assimilation. So as usual, we are going to draw this out to make the visual notes for this chapter. Alright, let's go. Okay, we are going to start with the food that we eat. Normally, the food that we eat consists of three main class of food. We have the carbo, we have the protein, and we have the lipid. These three main classes of food will go through our digestive system and then being digested by the enzyme into the monomer. So after the digestion, in our small intestine, we should have the glucose. Glucose. And we should have the amino acid. Amino acid. And we also have the glycerol and fatty acid. Glycerol and fatty acid. Once the food is being digested into their respective monomer, this nutrient is going to be absorbed into the circulatory system. And for human circulatory system, it involves two systems. The first one will be the blood circulatory system. So this vessel is named blood capillary. All right. The second one will be our lymphatic system. And this is called the lacteal. Now, let's start with the blood circulatory system. The nutrients that will be carried by the blood capillary will be the nutrient that is soluble in the water. For example, like the glucose and amino acid. So glucose and amino acid will move into the blood capillary and then it will be carried to the largest organ in our body, which is the liver. So right now, we are going to draw the liver here. As I mentioned just now, this blood capillary will carry the glucose and also the amino acid to the liver. So we are going to extend the blood capillary here. So this blood capillary will carry the blood to the liver through the hepatic portal vein. So right here, this vein is being called the hepatic portal vein. What is hepatic? Hepatic in biology means liver. So basically, the function of this vein carries blood from digestive system to the liver. Alright, now come back to here. Glucose will be sent to the liver for assimilation. Also, the amino acid will be sent to the liver for assimilation. Once the liver receives the glucose and the amino acid, assimilation, the process will happen in the liver. Alright, so let's start with glucose. When the liver cell they get the glucose, they will use the glucose to do cellular respiration. Cell respiration. So why they want to do cell respiration? The liver is just like a normal cell. They need energy when they want to do work. So glucose can provide the liver the energy when they are doing the cell respiration. Right. So sometimes when we take too much of glucose, we say when glucose is excess in our body, our liver will convert the glucose into glycogen. Convert to glycogen. So this glycogen will be stored in the liver. All right. Let's say uh, our blood is not enough glucose then this glycogen will be converted back to glucose and to be used for cellular respiration. Now, let's go to the amino acid. Liver will take the amino acid to synthesize the plasma protein. Basically, plasma protein is a protein that can be found in the plasma. For example, like the albumin, which can maintain the osmotic pressure in our blood. Okay, again, sometime when we eat extra protein, we will say when we have the excess of amino acid in our body. Protein is not like the glucose. It cannot be stored in the liver. So this amino acid must be removed out from our body. So the first thing our liver will do is it will carry out a process called deamination. For those who do know what is deamination, deamination means the removal of amino group. Now we all know that amino acids consist of one amino group. 
it will be converted into the urea. Uh, remember, this process it happens in our liver. Uh, urea. Urea is in our urine. So if you want to remove the urea, we are going to excrete it through the kidney. Excreted by kidney. That's all for the assimilation in the liver. Now, don't forget that other body cells that also need glucose and amino acid to carry out their function. Send the glucose and amino acid to the heart through the vein. The heart will pump the blood to the blood capillaries. So what kinds of nutrients we have in our blood? We have the glucose, glucose and the amino acid. Am I right? Amino acid. So let's draw a random cell here. Right now, the glucose from the blood capillary will enter the cell. Cell will use the glucose to do cellular respiration and this process is called assimilation. And assimilation it happens in the cell. Again, cell is going to take the glucose to do cell respiration. Same goes to the amino acid. Amino acid will also move into the cell and then cell is going to use the amino acid to repair the damaged cell, for example, to produce the hormone and enzyme, to produce the protoplasm. So protoplasm is the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Lah, huh? So that's all for the assimilation of glucose and amino acid. Now let's move on to the lipids. So just now, glucose and amino acid will move into the blood capillary and being sent to the liver and the body cell. For now, we are going to learn how glycerol and fatty acid being sent to our body cell. Any nutrients that is related to fats, lipids, or the nutrients that can dissolve in the lipid, they will move into the lactate. Okay, for example, what we have here, we have the lipids. Now remember, the nutrients that move into the lactate is not glycerol and fatty acid. Instead, it is the lipids. But why? Remember that glycerol and fatty acid, they will recombine during the process of absorption. So in the end, the combination of glycerol and fatty acid, which is the lipid, will be absorbed into the lactate. Now, we will see how lactate transport the lipids to the cell. Huh? First of all, we are going to draw two lactates here. This is the lactate and this is also another lactate. These two lactates will join together and they will form a larger tube for the limb vessel. So again, we are going to draw another limb vessels here. So this is another limb vessel. These two limb vessels will join together to form an even larger tube called the thoracic duct. Now, this thoracic duct will carry the lipids to the dead end. So right here, this is the dead end of the thoracic duct. When the lipid come to this point, this lipid will move the vein of the blood circulatory system. And this vein is being called the left subclavian vein. As we all know, vein is the blood vessel that will carry the blood towards the heart. So this left subclavian with the lipid inside will bring the blood towards the heart. Once the blood reach the heart, the heart will start to pump the blood to the blood capillaries. We have the lipids inside the blood capillary. This lipid is going to be taken by the cell and the cell is going to use the lipid to make plasma membrane. Assimilation happens. All right, that's all for the assimilation. I hope this video helped you to understand assimilation and I will see you soon.